Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Cross and our nine o'clock service. I am Deacon Tom Burton. I'll be assisting at Mass. Our pres presider is Father Gabuzda. A couple of announcements. There will be a second collection this weekend for the Catholic Communications Campaign after Holy Communion. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Also, there will be no 5.30 p.m. Mass or confessions this Tuesday, May 23rd, due to the eighth grade graduation and Mass at 7. So that's Tuesday, no 5.30 Mass. We'll begin in a moment. Please join in our opening hymn number 429, Canticle of the Sun, number 429. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Having celebrated the Ascension the other day, we know in faith that the Lord disappeared from sight, not to abandon us or any of those who believe in him, but to be even more present to them. So this presence, this risen Jesus, is with us today. So let us prepare to receive him by acknowledging our sins and preparing for these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, and to you my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned sin in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my, my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Mary of a Virgin, virgin all, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understand that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> we celebrated Ascension. Thursday, a few days ago, Thursday. And um, in these days between Ascension and Pentecost next week, uh, we hear in the prayers of the church very often a discussion not only that Jesus has not left us orphans, he's with us all the more, but uh, the truth that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. In other words, where Jesus is, we hope to be one day. But that um, kind of begs the question, a question that is actually answered, in the scriptures today, well, what exactly is heaven like? What is this eternal life all about that God has called us to and promised for us? Well, uh, sometimes we uh, kind of jokingly answer the question, well, what, what I hope heaven will be like. 
Many years ago, I was a seminarian, not yet a priest, and uh, I was assigned for the summer to a parish, and the associate pastor would take me around, kind of, I was shadowing him, you might say, and so we went to a hospital to visit a woman who was dying. This priest knew her, I guess she's a little bit of a character, and uh, so he said to her, well, tell me, what do you think heaven is like? So she kind of tossed her head back for a moment and said, well, I hope it's a warm place with a can of beer. Needless to say, it wasn't what I was expecting this woman to say. <laughs> but we say things like that, you know, so, okay, heaven will be a perfect golf game every day, heaven will be perfect temperature, all kinds of things where we jokingly talk about heaven. However, on another level, um, sometimes when we think about what will that, that would be like, uh, people can get talking about it uh, in such a way that, well, um, they get thinking about like a bucket list, like all these things I want to do before I die, which is not bad, but uh, kind of wondering, well, gosh, after that list is accomplished, what else is there? We kind of think about, you know, things that being perfect, well, I, I have enjoyment, one thing after the other, one thrill after another, and we get thinking a little bit about, gosh, eternal life, maybe it's boring. You know, we have all, all these things we want to accomplish. Uh, I have nothing against bucket lists. A good friend of mine just went skydiving this week. More power to him, I say. Not for me, but if he wanted to do that, that's fine. But uh, we have a sense, of course, a little bit of a, a lack of what exactly are we talking about when we talk about eternal life, if it's not sort of just one ecstatic moment after another. Well, in order to cross over to what our faith really teaches us about heaven and eternal life, we need to make a step from thinking about joys in things to joys in persons. Joys in things to joys in persons. Jesus says to us today in the gospel, he's praying to his father, he's praying for us, for those who believe in him. He says, Father, give glory to your son so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. This is eternal life, that they, we, should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Jesus' words tell us that heaven, eternal life, is about the enjoyment of being with someone who loves us more than we can ask for or imagine. Now, if that sounds a little tame, or we can't quite grasp it a bit, maybe a little analogy will help. A few years ago, I was uh, back in my home diocese, back in Pennsylvania. I was working with a group of men who were becoming deacons and their wives. And we had a little gathering once, and um, this one couple began talking about their marriage. And uh, they admitted that a few years into marriage, they learned something about each other they didn't know before they were married. So basically the wife said, well, I told him that I didn't really like baseball, but I went to baseball games because I wanted to be with him. And he said, well, I told her I didn't really like shopping, no surprise, but I went because I wanted to be with her. So it was the being with that made the difference. It was the being with this person whom I love, who loves me, this person who knows me, who I know and love and cherish. That, of course, we know, even humanly speaking, is a source of greater joy than anything we can possibly do or have. Well, if we make that analogy to our relationship with God, imagine being with someone who is infinitely more loving, who knows us infinitely more than we know ourselves, and who wants to be with us, who desires us for all of eternity. There's joy there. There's joy that is everlasting. And whatever else our life of heaven may be, certainly a life of greater peace, a life of knowing those who have gone before us in death, whatever else it might be, that is its core, to know God and to know Jesus Christ and to be known by him. 
Now, the good news is, for us, um, we don't have to wait for the moment of our death for this to begin. Whenever we move towards knowing God or known by him, however that happens in our life, we are already, in a sense, tasting heaven. So perhaps we have, I don't know, gone for a walk some night and seen an incredibly beautiful sunshine, sun, sunset, and are aware of the goodness of God. We have the sense of perhaps even God with us. Perhaps it's the birth of a baby, the miracle of new life. We have the sense of the wonder of life as part of that. And where did this all come from? Whenever we have a sense of the knowledge of God in some way, an experience of him, not simply a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge, in a sense, heaven has already begun for us. And so what awaits us after our death is not that far removed from what we can know even here on earth and can experience, even if it is very, very small in comparison with all of that. So today, here we are at Mass, as usual. It's important for us to imagine, to know, really, with our imaginations, that we'll never be closer to heaven than this moment we spend here, right now, at Mass. God is here with us. Jesus speaks to us. And in a few moments, we will be privileged to receive him into us. Many places in the Bible describe the life that lies ahead of us as being a banquet, a banquet feast in which God serves us and we are his guests. And so in a sense, that's what's happening for us today. A little bit of a taste of what lies ahead. So many scriptures tell us this is our destiny. First letter of John says, Dearly beloved children, we do not know what lies ahead of us. We are God's children now, but what we shall later be, we do not know. But we do know this, that when we see him, we shall see him as he is. We shall see him face to face. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. So even though I've spent the last few minutes telling you what heaven seems to be, we have really no idea about the goodness and the glory that awaits us. But we have a taste, we have an inkling, and we understand the words of Jesus today that it's about being with the one, God himself, who loves us infinitely and calls us to that life. Father, give glory to your son so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. This is eternal life that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let's lift up our hearts to the Lord who desires to answer our prayers. We pray that God the Father will guide Pope Francis, bishops, and all leaders of the church to help others know Jesus through their faithful witness of God's love for the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the risen Jesus will lead our national and local government representatives to protect the lives and liberty of all, especially the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit will inspire each of us to willingly and joyfully bear suffering for the name of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will graduate from Holy Cross School this coming Tuesday, May 23rd, may they remain close to Jesus wherever they go. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the safety and well-being of all Holy Cross students during their summer break that begins this coming Friday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those now serving in our armed forces, May they remain safe and return soon to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, look upon the intentions we bring here today and all those intentions on the Holy Cross prayer line. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will welcome those who have died into the eternal joy of his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for John and Agnes Kurzman and Lori Wagner Matthauser, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O good and gracious Father, we thank you for the gifts you have given us without number, most especially the gift of your beloved Son, put to death, raised to life, and seated at your right hand. As we believe you have given us this gift of eternal life, so care for us here on earth. Grant all that we ask this day prayers we have voiced in the silent prayers of our hearts, for we make them in his name, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 383, Servant Song, number 383.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept our sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and the glory of his name. For our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. in our communion hymn number 587 we are many parts number 587 
please join in our missional prayer found on the inside cover of your hymnal. Who am I, Lord, that you should come to me? Blessed is your holy name. Open up my heart to accept you into my life. Take me as I give myself to you and let me know you, love you, serve you. Open my ears to your holy word so I can follow your teachings. Clear up my eyes, drive away the distractions of the world that prevent me from seeing you everywhere. Let me know your holy presence in the Eucharist that is given to me to be Christ to others. May your Son, Jesus Christ, be my Lord and Savior, and send me out to proclaim the gospel with joy, humility, and thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 189, Go Make of All Disciples, number 189.